cancer of the esophagus. This is one of a series of cancer videos that can be found on the website aboutcancer.com. This video is devoted to treatment options available for patients with esophagus cancer. The best advice on treatment can often be found on the website of the National Comprehensive Cancer Network, or the NCCN. Their website can be accessed and it's free, and it's updated constantly. They do have a more patient-friendly website as well that may be more appropriate for patients. In order to use the NCCN guidelines, it's important to understand the staging system, the TNM system, and this is discussed in more detail in an earlier video. If the patient has TIS or in situ esophagus cancer, the best option is often endoscopic resection or ablation rather than doing esophagectomy and having to remove the entire esophagus. There are new endoscopic procedures that experts in gastroenterology are able to perform, commonly referred to as EMR or endoscopic mucosal resection. And these techniques allow the gastroenterologist to remove uh, cancers that are superficial. There is a technique called photodynamic therapy and other ablative therapies that let the GI doctor burn out or ablate the cancer. EMR would stand for endoscopic mucosal resection or ESD, endoscopic submucosal dissection that goes even deeper or ablative therapy. This could be radiofrequency ablation or RFA, cryoablation freezing, photodynamic therapy using laser. The goal of endoscopic recession is to completely remove and eradicate all cancer in the early stages. One of the large studies published recently showed overall survival rates as high as 84% or even 91% for superficial cancers of the esophagus using an endoscopic technique. There are comparison studies between EMR and ESD. ESD is probably better and removing the tumor more completely and having a lower risk of recurrent rates. These again all depend on the expertise of the gastroenterologist and the depth of the cancer in the wall of the esophagus. If the tumor is superficial but a little deeper such as a T1A, endoscopic reception may still be the way to go. Even for T1B patients with adenocarcinoma, Endoscopic reception may be an option, but for squamous cancer, from this stage on, it's necessary to do an esophagectomy and remove the esophagus. There's no evidence in these earlier stages that adding chemo radiation to the surgery is beneficial. The European trial, FFCD9901, as shown here, had survival rates with surgery alone that were actually better than combining surgery with chemo radiation. On the other hand, if the tumor is more advanced, deeper into the wall of the esophagus or involving lymph nodes, then preoperative chemo radiation followed by surgery is considered the standard way to approach this disease. There are so-called meta-analysis where they've looked at multiple published studies. In general, the overall three-year survival is better with neoadjuvant or preoperative chemo radiation before surgery. Another meta-analysis came to the same conclusion, overall better mortality, though this review found higher surgical complications or operative mortality if the surgery was preceded by chemotherapy and radiation. A more recent meta-analysis again showed overall survival advantage to preoperative chemoradiation, and, and the overall survival was 22% better they then also found that chemo radiation was better than just chemotherapy alone by about 12%, as noted here. An MD Anderson trial as well found that preoperative chemo radiation was better than just preoperative chemotherapy, with a better three year survival as shown here. The CROSS trial did, was a big study comparing preoperative chemo radiation followed by surgery with surgery alone. The patients who had the chemo radiation first had a higher resection rate, an R0 resection, meaning everything came out cleanly, and more likely were found to have no cancer at all in the specimen 19% of the time. In their study, the hospital mortality was no worse, so there were no higher side effects.
and the overall survival was clearly superior. And this is the survival curve as noted with the cross trial. Another trial from FFCD in early stages did not show an advantage as previously discussed, but they did have much higher operative mortality in patients whose surgery was preceded by chemo radiation. So again, this mean, needs to be done by experts and only in patients with more advanced stages. And this is another study showing that chemo plus radiation before surgery, the blue line, has a better survival than just using chemotherapy alone prior to surgery. And another trial showing more modern chemotherapy with radiation prior to surgery and overall fairly favorable long-term survival. If the patient does so well with preoperative chemo radiation, then the question comes up, is surgery really necessary? And some patients may just get chemo radiation and skip the surgery. Some of the early trials from the Radiation Therapy Oncology Group, or RTOG, such as the 8501 study, compared chemo radiation with radiation alone. There were no patients cured with radiation alone, but with chemo radiation, the five-year survival was 14 to 26 percent, so not bad, about as good as we often see with surgery. The RTOG then did another study in 94, 9405 trial, and combined chemotherapy with even higher doses of radiation. They did not find any advantage to using a higher dose of radiation, but chemo radiation was still curing a certain percent of the patients. More recent trials by the RTOG, such as the 0113 trial, have used even more sophisticated chemotherapy regimens along with the radiation and had even better overall survival, 28.7 median survival in the best arm of the RTOG 0113 trial. And this survival curve is shown here. This leads them to think that maybe radiation plus chemo may be superior enough that surgery is not even necessary. There are studies like this to show chemo radiation survival appears to be the same as patients who do have surgery. And another study showing the same results out about 10 years. There was a randomized trial by Stahl comparing preoperative chemo radiation followed by surgery uh, with the chemo radiation and no surgery at all. Overall survival was found to be equivalent between the two groups. Patients who had surgery did have a higher local control rate as noted, 64% rather than 40, but there was higher mortality or complications from the surgery, 12.8% versus three. So again, that the overall survival came out about the same and the survival curve is shown here. There was another trial by Bedane, again, comparing preoperative chemo radiation followed by surgery with just, surger with just chemo radiation alone and no surgery. This was the FFCD9102 trial. The overall survival as noted was just as good without the surgery as noted. There was a high, higher local control in the patients who had surgery, 66 versus 57 percent, and it was less likely patients who had surgery would need to have a stent put in to prevent obstruction than in the patients who did not have surgery. is noted here, 5% versus 32%. So in other words, one out of three patients who did not have surgery had to have a stent put in to keep the esophagus open enough that the patient could swallow. And the survival comparison curves are shown here, with or without surgery. So what to do after pre-op chemo radiation? If there's no evidence of disease, some doctors will provide surveillance and just decide to watch the patient closely. Many doctors will recommend going ahead with the original planned esophagectomy. Both of these approaches are reasonable. If there's clearly still persistent disease after pre-op chemo radiation, then most people would proceed with surgery and esophagectomy unless the patient is in such poor health that only palliative care or hospice type care is appropriate. If surgery is done, the pathologist will comment on how complete the resection was. R0 means there was no cancer at the resection margins or edges. An R1 resection means there was still microscopic residual at the edges or margins. 
An R2 resection means there was obvious cancer left behind. In a patient with squamous cancer, if there is an R0 resection, generally no further therapy is recommended. If there was still cancer left behind, then chemoradiation may be offered. With adenocarcinoma, even with an R0 resection, there may be some advantage to adding chemoradiation for patients who had lymph node-involved cancer. And similarly, if there was an R1 or R2 resection, it certainly would be worthwhile considering giving the patient additional treatment with chemo or radiation. Surgery is quite complicated. Obviously, removing the esophagus and replacing the esophagus and reconnecting this with part of the stomach can be a very risky and a complicated operation and should only be done by experts who do a high volume of this type of surgery. The general principles of esophagus surgery are that all patients fit enough to undergo a major resection should probably be offered surgery. Unless the tumor is so close to the upper throat or cricopharyngeus too high in the neck, that surgery is not really a good option. Or unless the cancer is so superficial that endoscopic surgery alone may be all that's necessary. Or three, if the cancer is so advanced, inoperable, or there's heavy or bulky lymph nodes, that surgery may not be worthwhile. If the cancer is inoperable and very locally advanced, then chemoradiation may still be a reasonable option. If the patient is very poor health, then perhaps chemo alone or just radiation alone may be all that is useful. And if the patient is in very poor health, then only palliative care or hospice care may be the most reasonable thing to consider. There are chemotherapy drugs that are available for esophagus cancer. Most of them as a single agent or one drug at a time have a fairly low response rate. If these drugs are combined, either two drugs, often called a doublet, or three drugs together, called a triplet, the odds the response rate is much higher is noted, 20 to 30% with a doublet, up to 40 to 48% with three drugs, and the median survival in patients with advanced disease will move up from eight months up to 17 to 19 months with some of these more complicated combination chemotherapy regimens. There are standard protocols for preoperative chemo radiation. These are shown, carboplatinum and taxol, so-called carbotaxol is probably the most common preoperative radiation that's combined with the radiation. For patients who already have metastatic disease, then three drug regimens are generally offered the patient. And there are now molecularly targeted drugs that may become increasingly available, such as Herceptin or Ramacirumab, as noted here. It seems likely, as in other cancers, that more molecularly targeted drugs or so-called biologicals will be available in the future. More information about esophagus cancer can be found on the website aboutcancer.com.